as I said in Strasbourg, that doesn't look promising. Mm. <gasps> I broke it! Back in January, these Florida girls traveled all the way down the entire coast of Florida. We were set to visit Key West for the first time. The full drive is about 12 hours, so we decided to break it up and stop about nine hours in, in Miami. Finding a hotel in Miami is an interesting task. Ultimately, we decided on the Evie Hotel, which is situated in downtown Miami on Biscayne Boulevard. If you're in Miami for the party town kind of experience, you're in the right place. Since we were just passing through and that's not really our scene, it was quite overwhelming. The parking is valet and we had kind of a crazy experience, but that's par for the course in the city. Once we made it inside, we found the hotel lobby pretty small and the same for the elevator, but again, it's a city and space is limited. Once in our room, we were shocked. We had read online that the rooms were tiny, but ours was huge. We were on the penthouse floor and had more room than we needed, but we had a really tiny window. Being the kind of people we are, we'd trade size for a big window to enjoy the view any day. We ventured out onto the streets of Miami for dinner and stumbled upon a very cool restaurant. Back at the hotel, upon further inspection, the cleanliness of the room was a little iffy. There were some sticky things on our nightstand and some unidentified hairs on my bed. This may not be the case for every room because Johnny B's bed was actually completely fine, but still, the housekeeping in our room was a little lacking. The restaurant in the hotel was only open for breakfast, but we opted to skip out altogether and get an early start the next morning. We drove the remaining three to four hours to Key West. Since we'd never ventured this far south, we were expecting one long bridge from the base of Florida to the Keys, with exits to go off and explore each one. Wrong. Oh, I was thinking I was gonna have to get off the bridge and go down. No, oh, that's cool. It's a series of smaller bridges that take you through each of the Keys, with the longest bridge being about seven miles long. If you have a fear of bridges, I think you'll probably be completely fine. It's not as terrifying as it sounds. After the Florida Keys adventure, we made it to Key West and arrived at our beautiful B&B, &B, the Curry Mansion Inn. We have a whole video up about this beautiful place. We'll link it in the description and in the cards so you can check it out. The day we arrived in Key West, we were set to eat at a place called Hogfish Bar. But unfortunately, the owner who invited us had a family emergency and we had to change plans. No worries, we just drove back to Old Town Key West, parked our car at the Curry Mansion and started walking down Duval Street. By this time, we were right in the start of sunset and pretty hungry, so we chose Lucy's Retired Surfer's Bar. The service was pretty average. The conch fritters were pretty good. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Good. Joni B's shrimp and grits were bland, but still average. My nachos were delicious and massive, and the people watching was pretty darn good too. After a quick stop at Walgreens, we were back in the mansion for the night. Bright and early the next morning, it was time for our delicious Curry Mansion breakfast and a walk to Mallory Square. We grabbed our tickets for the tourist train and hopped aboard. We were fortunate enough to partner up with the Florida Keys Tourism Bureau, so we were able to experience a lot of fun things to share with you. The Conk Tourist Train was one of those things. If you pick up your tickets at one of the many kiosks, like the one in Mallory Square, you'll be paying around $48. That includes a full day of hop-on, hop-off capabilities with the Conk Tour Train, as well as entry into the Sales Trails Museum and the Hemingway Rum Company Papa's Pillar Distillery. If you buy online, you'll save almost $15. There are also packages available that include entry into other attractions. Instead of hopping on and hopping off, we rode the tourist train from start to finish. My kneecaps are bruised. I'm a little dizzy and I'm gonna go. Once we were done and had been sufficiently knocked around in the back of the train, we were pretty hungry. We wandered the streets, grabbed a coffee, and ultimately stumbled into two friends' patio restaurant. Average service, average food, delicious dessert, and the pigeons brought me immense joy. After lunch, it was time to tackle the Ernest Hemingway house. Full disclosure, we were not here for our literary affinity for Ernest Hemingway, we came for the cats. So we didn't do the tour, 
but the tickets are $15 with a tour included, so you may want to take advantage of that. Hi. Ooh. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> After living it up with some six-toed cats, we relaxed at the mansion for a while until it was time for dinner. We had the incredible pleasure to eat at Loggerheads Beach Bar. The people were amazing, the food was delicious, and the view, the view was stunning. It was a great way to end our first full day in Key West. This was where the adventure was supposed to end. We had planned to head back to Miami for a night or two, but we just couldn't tear ourselves away from paradise. So we extended our stay in Key West. On day two, we decided to switch things up and hop on the Old Town Trolley Tour. But first, lunch. Johnny B did a little research and found a place right around the corner from the Curry Mansion called Caroline's Cafe. It's located on Duval Street and is on the same property as Caroline's Other Side and the Abbey, which are two very hip and eclectic bar lounges. All three are located on the property where Dr. Joseph Porter was born. He was Key West's first native-born physician and one of the doctors who helped eradicate yellow fever. Pretty cool, right? The service at Caroline's was amazing. The food was delicious. Absolutely no complaints here. After lunch, we walked down to Mallory Square and got our tickets. These will run you about $42, but we'd actually recommend the trolley over the train. Sure, the train's cute and it's a fun experience, and it takes you around Old Town Key West, but the trolley takes you through Old Town and the new part of Key West. It's the same hop on hop off deal, so you can actually use it as another form of public transportation. It's really convenient if you have a hotel in Newtown Key West, but want to visit Old Town, you can use it to get back and forth. Just like with the train, you also get free entry into the Sales to Rails Museum and the Hemingway Rum Company Papa's Pillar Distillery. After riding the trolley from start to finish, we decided to visit the aquarium. The entry price is $15, and honestly, we don't recommend it. It's pretty small, and you can find about as many fish in the aquarium as you can in your average local pet store. But the turtles are pretty cute. After a quick journey through the aquarium and a little shopping, we went on a rooster hunt. <coughs> and then we checked out some of the sculptures in the park. Just across Mallory Square is the Shipwreck Museum. So, we figured, why not check it out? The entry cost is also $15, but this museum is actually pretty cool. We took a quick nap back at the mansion and it was time for dinner. Guess where we went? Yeah, we went back to Caroline's Cafe. Still amazing service, still delicious food, and this time we got a fun tour of the inside. Back at the Curry Mansion, we had a special guest. Resident cat Rusty decided to wander in and hang out for a while. The next morning was our last. We ate our last breakfast at the Curry Mansion and headed out. We drove the whole 12 hours back and what an adventure it was. Do I recommend 12 hours straight? No, not really. By the end, I was a little bit delirious. But Joni B was a rock star driver and we made it home safe and sound. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you Wednesday for a video all about who we are and what we do. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a post. Peace out, y'all. Way down upon the Swanee.